Okay, so it sounds like you're saying if there's certain limitations on high fat, fat whole food plants, that what you're really saying to everyone is that what we should be eating every day is vegetables, beans, and whole grains. And a whole grain is quinoa, millet, amaranth, teff, buckwheat, wild rice. A bean is a chickpea, lentil, lima bean, black eye pea, pinto bean. So beans, whole grains, and vegetables is what you're recommending. Is Am I putting words in your mouth or is that accurate? Fruit. Don't forget fruit. Fruit. <laughs> fruit. Lots of fruit. Lots of fruit. The beans and whole grains and vegetables is correct, though? Yes, yep. absolutely. Yeah, they're okay. all correct. Absolutely. Yes, it's human food. Yes. Well, okay. well described. Okay. Tomorrow night, we're having a panel with Brian Clement and Anna Marie Clement on. <clears throat> I like Brian. He's a friend of mine. I've spoken to him a lot of times. And I've asked him a hundred times over the last 15 years, Brian, why do you say that fruit feeds yeast, mold, fungus, sugar, cancer? And he says that him and Thomas Seyfried um, have conclusively said that when they look at cancer cells, um, that sugar feeds it. And that um, fruit, even if it comes, has been bred over the years and hybridized to be sweeter than a wild blackberry would be. And therefore, he's saying that sugar fruit is not our friend. So obviously, he's saying it's better than ice cream and cookies and cake. But he's saying, you know, you should be not going eating a lot of fruit. Um, and I want him to be wrong because all I want to do in life is eat cherries. There's nothing that would make me more joyous. Um, but he is saying that and he does say it consistently and he hasn't budged in 20 years. And he's very insistent that this is what the studies show. Um, and I do find that in my back in, in nature, you get very little fruit. It's mostly in the month of July. It's little small wild blackberries and black raspberries. Like I wouldn't really have access to most of the fruit that I get that's in the store. So it sort of it does make sense that fruit is a little bit unnatural today. The, the, the Fuji apple seems sweeter than it would be in a crab apple in nature. So is it possible that we should be somewhat careful about fruit? And I want to be wrong. I want you to say no, eat as much as you want, but I'd like to know. Uh, what do you think? Dr. Popper, I'll let you. Okay. A well, couple of things. The first thing is that um, I want to talk about hybridization. Because if you go to the grocery store tomorrow and somebody who's really knowledgeable about every food in the produce section and say, I would like to buy only the foods that are not hybridized. There's nothing to buy. It is all hybridized. And it's important that it's hybridized. We had a potato famine in Ireland that killed a million people because the Irish did not know how to hybridize potatoes. So when the blight came, it killed all the potatoes. If there had been nine kinds of potatoes growing in Ireland at the time, the death rate would have been zero. So the problem I think in some cases, and, and I like Brian, by the way, in his life, they're lovely people. I think they try very hard to help people and they have a lovely place in Florida. I think it's important to say that. But a lot of people talk about hybridization as if it's a negative thing. It's the reason we have food, okay? And, and my, my dad, I'll just share this with you. When my father retired, he always was interested in horticulture and gardening and all that. So he went to Ohio State University, and there's a great thing. I don't know if people know about it, but if you're 60 years old or older, you can take classes for free at public universities and college, colleges. If you want a degree, you got to pay for it. But if you just want to go take classes, you could. So my father got the equivalent of a master's degree in horticulture. And while he was there, he worked with hybridization. And they had an experimental garden. And he used to bring over all these different, like, here's a white sweet potato shaped like a pear. And here's a tomato and all this kind of stuff. And, and what they're doing is they're looking at how to get food so it can travel further, last longer in your uh, refrigerator and all this sort of thing. So so hybridization is not bad, and that does not make fruit bad. We hybridize all of our potatoes and beans and vegetables too. The second thing is, is you have a comment that needs to be placed in context, all right? Cancer cells, one of the characteristics of cancer cells is they respire abnormally, which means they take up glucose at a higher rate, 18 times the rate. That's why you can see metastasized cancer on a PET scan. Because if you use the right dye and everything else, you can see the uptake, use a, an analog, and you can see the uptake of the glucose into the cancer cells. That's how you know where they are. 
But the problem is that all carbohydrate turns to glucose and, and, and to make it just simple for now, it's a, a harder conversion to show, but we don't have blackboards and slides. So let's just say if you eat broccoli, you're gonna get some glucose. If you eat potatoes, you're gonna get some glucose and some rice and strawberries and um, all of it, okay? So if you're going to starve the cancer cells of glucose, there are a couple of ways to do it. You can do it for a while with fasting. And I've sent 500 people to Alan Goldhammer's place, at least maybe more now, um, some of whom are cancer patients who wanted to um, quick health improvement, reset their bodies and begin the process of starving cancer cells so that they could uh, make the chemotherapy more effective or need less of it and, or shrink the tumor so the margins are clear and you can take it out. There are all kinds of reasons for doing it. Um, so that's one, one thing that you can do. The, another thing that you can do is that you can, um, you, can, you can eat a ketogenic diet. And I wanna be crystal clear about this. There are two uses for the ketogenic diet. One is for cancer patients who have cancers that are incurable and kill you quickly. Like if you have glioblastoma, your lifespan is short, maybe only a year. You don't have enough time to go through the healing process of a plant-based diet and fixing everything that's wrong in your life. So a ketogenic diet may keep you alive for a very long period of time. And then also for epileptic children. So the ketogenic diet has been misused and has gotten a bad name because people go out, first of all, and, and, and they're saying they're eating a ketogenic diet when they're just eating fat. I've, I have seen cancer patients who died because people told them a high fat diet was a ketogenic diet and they never were in ketosis. So the cancer ran wild anyway, right? But, but a ketogenic diet for a glioblastoma or a stage four pancreatic cancer patient is, is worth trying in some instances if you do it technically correctly, all right? So that's, and what it does is it puts people in a permanent fasting state because when your body's deprived of carbohydrate, it thinks it's fasting. But to suggest that if you somehow avoid fruit, you're gonna avoid glucose uptake is not correct. I mean, the, the, you know, the scientific textbooks are pretty clear on this carbohydrate and glucose are, are, are the same. So, so um, eat your strawberries and, and eat your blackberries and your bananas and everything else. And you cannot stay away from hybridized food. You will have nothing to eat. And, and, we, and farmers have been doing this for hundreds of years. This is not new technology. They did it through seed sharing in the beginning. Now we can make it happen a little bit quicker for better results, but hybridization is in all foods. Thank you. Well answered. Uh, I don't have much to add except cancer cells. Uh, they'll be happy to grow on fats and uh, and protein. They'll, they'll eat a lot of anything you throw at them. They're they're quite versatile. Uh, and um, and you know there's a grain of truth like everything else uh, in there. And you, and if you got a cancer, you don't want to be eating a bunch of Snickers bars. And, uh, and Reese's Buttercups and drinking Coca-Colas and flooding your system with, with fructose and, and dextrose and these you know, very easily uh, assimilatable uh, carbohydrates that are gonna start fueling some reactions you don't want. But that's different than eating an apple uh, where, the, where you've got a whole different set of, uh, of sugars. Uh, they're, they're bound to the fiber, plenty of water, and lots of vitamins and minerals come in with it, and the sugars rise very slowly and gently and clear out quickly. Um, so to, to take that big broad brush, oh, carbs are bad, carbs are going to feed cancer. Uh, again, uh, you got to be a bit of uh, a, uh, somewhere between a scientist and just a good wise consumer. Uh, and as long as you're eating whole plant foods, uh, the occasional orange or apple, uh, I've never seen any study showing that that uh, causes the cancer patient any, any sacrifice in survival or enjoyment of life or anything like that. But don't be eating the Cokes and the candies. Uh, that, that's true. I'll certainly agree with Brian on that one. 